Hi, my name is JR Tallman, and in this NetSuite tutorial, I'll be taking you through how to set up expense allocations within NetSuite. Before we get into the expense allocation setup itself, the first thing we're going to want to make sure to do is to enable the features for allocations. This can be found underneath Setup, Company, and Enable Features. Once we're on the Enable Features page, we can go to the Accounting sub-tab. Once underneath this sub-tab, if we go down, you'll see Expense Allocations and Dynamic Allocations underneath the Advanced Features field grouping. We're going to go ahead and enable expense allocations, and I'm also going to enable dynamic allocations, which can be used to calculate the allocation weight based on statistical account balances within NetSuite. Once I click on this, what you're going to see is this is also going to enable statistical accounts as well as multiple units of measure. I'm going to simply click on OK since we do want to enable that, and it's also alerting me multiple units of measure will be enabled. That's OK. And now I have expense allocation and dynamic allocation enabled. Once that's enabled, I can go ahead and click on save. And now once that has been saved in the system, what you're going to see is underneath transactions, financial, you will see an area to create allocation schedules. So you will see three areas. You'll see the create allocation schedules. You'll see create intercompany allocation schedules if you want to do an intercompany schedule. And then create allocation batches if you want to have batches run in order based on multiple allocation schedules set up. In this particular tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the create allocation schedules. I can go ahead and click on on this where I can click on the list to create the first allocation schedule within NetSuite. I'm just going to click on create allocation schedules and this will pop up in the page to create my first allocation schedule. Now a common allocation schedule that most companies create are based on rent allocation. So in this case I'm going to call this rent expense and then the subsidiary since this is not an intercompany allocation I do need to give this a subsidiary. I cannot include all subsidiaries here so I'm going to go ahead and give this my parent company subsidiary. The next field is the frequency. When do I want this allocation schedule to run based on the transactions within the period? Most commonly, you're going to keep this as end of period since you're going to be running it at the end of the month. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and put a next date. This is required to run. So end of period, and then I'm going to put a next date at the end of the month. Now, if this was a different frequency, I would need to put a subsequent date. But since this is end of period, I'm going to simply keep this as the end of the month. I'm also going to keep this Remind Forever checked. I don't need to have a number remaining unless that is required in your environment. This is going to be active, so I'm going to keep that box unchecked. And then the allocation mode is very important here, as we have two allocation modes. We have a fixed allocation, which you're going to see in this particular tutorial, where I'm going to simply enter a amount for each of my allocations uh, for the percentages that you'll see in just a moment. Otherwise, I can use a dynamic allocation, and the dynamic allocation would actually look at your statistical accounts, the balances that make up those statistical accounts, such as headcount, and it would then allocate based on the headcount. So in this particular example, I'm going to keep this as fixed allocation. Now moving down to my source, the first thing you'll see is a credit account, credit name, credit department, location, class, all of our different segmentation. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to keep these as default. What we're going to simply do is we're going to say anything that goes to my rent expense account is going to be allocated out to that same account, but it's going to be hitting different departments. So the important thing here is going to be the account down below here. Now, it is important to note that you can select your individual accounts down below here, or if you scroll up to the top here, you're going to see actual account types. So you can say anything that hits, let's say, an expense account will be allocated out to that expense account you're going to see in my destination in just a moment. So you can use account types here, or you can put specific account GL accounts down below. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply select my rent expense. I'm not going to select an account type. And then I'm going to move over to my name, department, location, and class. So for my name, I'm going to keep this as any. So anything that hits rent is going to be allocated out. Same thing with my department, location, and class. I'm simply just going to go ahead and put any here. And it's going to look at any transactions in the system that are hitting this rent within the month. Right, so if I have a, a vendor bill, which you'll see in just a moment, that hits the 60001 rent account, and it does not have a department set, whether it's blank or if it's any department, it will get allocated out within this allocation schedule. So once that's set up, I could add additional accounts if I wanted to. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my destination sub tab here. I'm going to click this values are percentages, which you'll see in just a moment. I'm going to put percentages down below that I want to allocate out to. 
All right, so I'm going to check that box off, and then I'm going to use the source credit account. So what this is going to do is it's going to simply use the same account when allocating out. If you don't want to have that same account, you can put an account down below here. But once I check this box off, this account will become inline tech, and I will not be able to change that uh, particular account. So I'm going to check that off, and you can see how it is grayed out here. And then I can enter my particular allocations that I want to do to my uh, department location class and put the particular weight, which is going to be a percentage. So in this particular example, I'm going to say everything that hits rent is going to go out to my marketing department, and it's not going to use a location or class. I'm just simply going to allocate it out to my marketing, and we're going to say this is 75%. I'm going to add this row, and then I'm going to enter another department, and I'm going to put sales in that particular department, and I'm going to put 25%. Now, the key here is to make sure that your entire weight equals 100%. Otherwise, NetSuite will not like this. It will give you an error to say your values need to equal 100% in total. Right, so what this should do, again, is once I enter a vendor bill or any type of GL posting transaction that actually hits this rent account, at the end of the month, I can come back here, run this, and it will allocate 75% for that same account to marketing and 25% for sales. Once that's done, I can simply click on save, and the first allocation schedule that I created has been saved successfully. Now, the next thing before I click create journal entry is going to be creating a vendor bill in the system that actually hits this account where you can see a real life example of how this looks. So I'm going to go ahead and create a vendor bill underneath transactions, payables, enter bills. And once on the vendor bill page, I'm going to go ahead and enter a vendor here, which is going to be my test vendor. I can keep the default currency, which is going to be the default currency for that particular subsidiary that we're doing our allocation for, which in this case is going to be my parent company. I'm going to make sure this is approved and hitting the GL right away. And I'm going to make sure that underneath my expenses sub list down below here, I'm going to be entering that against my 6001 rent account. And we'll do this for $10,000. And now on this line, I'm going to keep my department, class, location, all my segmentations blank. Um, if it was any department, it would still allocate because I put any. Remember, that will be using any if it's blank as well. And then once this bill has been created, I'm going to simply save this vendor bill. Okay, the vendor bill has been saved successfully. It's hitting the GL since it's approved. Now what I can do is I can go back to that allocation schedule. And to get back to the allocation schedule, I can go to transactions, financial, create allocation schedules, and list. And this will show me all my allocation schedules. Now it is important to note if you have multiple allocation schedules, they need to be uh, created and run one by one in the system. So I can't run multiple allocation schedules at once, unfortunately. So you need to need to go into each one and actually create the allocation schedule uh, with the journal entry. Or alternatively, if I am on this list view, I can click on enter here, and this is also going to create my journal entry. But in this exercise, I'm going to go in and click on view, and I'm simply going to click on create journal entry. So once I click on create journal entry, what this will do is it will create the journal entry and hopefully allocate the 75% and 25% of that $10,000 vendor bill. So this takes me directly into the journal entry once it's been generated. And you can see down below here, my allocation source, 10,000 with my test vendor, is now allocated out with my 75% as well as my 25% hitting the correct departments based on that allocation schedule setup that we did previously. If this looks good, you're good to go till the next period. Now, if this does not look good, you can simply delete the journal entry if you wanted to uh, and test this out again if you are in a sandbox or development account like myself. If I go back to that allocation schedule, because I created this particular allocation schedule, the next date is not going to be 131. It's going to go ahead and move forward to the next particular period. So if I go ahead and refresh this, you're going to see my next date is at 228. So if you are testing this, right, you want to be able to make sure you're in the same period. You're going to want to edit this and change the period back to the end of the month if you are using end of period to make sure that you can test this out again with any transactions that have been posting. All right, so just keep that in mind that the next date will progress forward once you actually create the allocation schedule within NetSuite. This concludes how to set up fixed allocation schedules within NetSuite. Feel free to comment, subscribe, and list any other additional videos that you would like topics against in the comments, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.